a lot of times people ask if I want to sell one of my Roadmasters or or my daughter's Roadmaster or my son-in-law's Roadmaster, and they won't let me sell them. So after having this car here for 11 years, I decided maybe I'll sell it. A horn. Goddamn freight train. You should see all the Pierce is scrambling when they hear that sound. They just, oh my God, you know, so... Uh, it scares the hell out of Democrats, this foreign. It's like they think it's a train. And they think, train, that's, that sounds Republican to me. Yeah. Train, that's a very conservative thing, isn't it? Is it isn't only uh, toxic white men, aren't they, aren't they the only people that uh, run the railroad? Those sons of bitches? So uh, it scares them when they hear that sound. So. <laughs> For those who are offended, you don't want my car anyway. This is a conservative car. It's not a liberal car. All right, we can put two or three Priuses in the trunk. In fact, I should take out the spare tire, put a Prius in the trunk. If this car breaks down, I can drive the Prius home, provided it's got enough electricity to get me there. Okay. beautiful Santa Rita Mountains in lovely Tucson, Arizona. This car has 256 rear gear, but it's still a very good um, performer from a standing stop. I don't know why. What's really nice is I get 17 or 18 miles a gallon around town with it. And I take that calculation with every tank I ever uh, put in any car all my life. On the freeway, I usually drive 85, 90 or so. So I only get like 22 or 23. <laughs> if I were to drive it at normal levels, I'd probably get 25 to 27. I should try it sometime. <laughs> so, uh... A lot of times people ask if I want to sell one of my Roadmasters or, or my daughter's Roadmaster or my son-in-law's Roadmaster, and they won't let me sell them. So after having this car here for 11 years, I decided maybe I'll sell it. Um, this is the longest I've ever owned a car. Uh, the second longest was a 1971 Chevelle, which I had for like nine years. So most of the time, five years is a limit, and often it's one or two years. I've had 86 cars so far. This particular car uh, was my dad's car. And he bought it from a good friend who picked it up for him expressly for my dad. The original owner sold it to my dad's friend in Colorado, Denver. And before he, the friend bought it, he asked my dad, are you interested in this car? I'll, it's here in Denver and I'll pick it up for you you on it. My dad agreed and two months later when my dad's friend who spends his uh, winters in Tucson, Arizona, drove it down for my dad and my dad loved the car. My dad's had, I don't know if he's had as many as cars as I have, but he certainly has come close. Um, a few of them stick in my mind. Uh, one is a 1940 LaSalle four-door convertible, which uh, he had when I was just a toddler. Um, that was, that's one car that was one of his pride and joys. You know, he's had several cars that he really loved, and that was one of them. Um, another car, I don't remember what year it was. It could have been a 53, anywhere, 49, 50, 51, somewhere around there. A Cadillac, the Sedanette with the Fastback. And that's when they first had the up, those upright little tail lights. I remember that car. And uh, one thing I remember about it, uh, when we lived in Jamestown, North Dakota, I was three years old. My mom went, my dad was at work. My mom went out, to, we're going to go shopping or something. And uh, she's going to start the car, but she has no keys. But Buicks, until the year, I don't know when they started, but until the year 19... 65, the ignition switch 
If you turn off the car, but don't turn it all the way to lock the ignition, you can pull out the key and you never have to need a key again to start the car. You can start it just by turning the little tabs on this ignition. So apparently she went in, went in to give my dad a call and he explained that to her and we, she came back out and started the car without the keys. I remember that car. It was, um, it was a car that he loved too very much. And a couple other cars that he loved uh, was a 1970 Buick Electra Limited four-door hardtop with the uh, brocade interior. It was um, uh, yellow. I can't remember the name of it right now. The same color as my convertible that I have on YouTube. Um, and it had the beige or sandalwood uh, cloth interior. Beautiful, beautiful car. And that got wrecked when he was sitting at a four-way stop and two other cars, one coming across and one coming towards him, neither of them stopped for the four-way stop sign. They crashed together and then they smashed into him. Also, uh, another car that I remember that he loved very much was a 1971 Buick Riviera, which I painted for him. And he sold it to uh, Dan Aykroyd's father. But this particular car that we're featuring today was uh, not his last car, but his last Pride and Joy car. I remember a conversation. Hey. Uh, we had, and he said, uh, "I should maybe I should drive this car and enjoy it more because it only had like thirty thousand miles. I had twenty six thousand miles on it when he bought it." And I think it was still under 30,000 miles when he uh, talked to me about this. I said, I said, hell yeah. I said, you should enjoy it. Um, and then a year later, he was dead. So anyway, I have the car now. And I'm going to show you everything I can about it. You might have to be patient to get to the good part because I'm going to show you the bad parts first. And this being a mostly a Arizona car with 126,000 miles. Um, I, uh, in Arizona, the sun beats the crap out of your car. It, it hurts the paint, it hurts the soft parts, it hurts the interior. And even though this car has been garaged or covered all the time it was in Arizona, you can't garage it or cover it when you're driving it. So you're driving it in the sun and the sun has taken its toll on this car. Uh, later on, I will talk about the uh, functionality and the mechanical aspects of it, which uh, I would consider to be a nine or 10 out of 10. So mechanically, functionally, it's top notch. Cosmetically, it has its sunburnt problems. So let's begin with that. All right, so uh, we're first we're gonna look at the uh, cosmetic problems with this car because of the sun mostly. Um, first of all, both the front and the back, the, uh, the bumper fillers here are all sunburnt. And uh, some of the plastic chrome trim is sunburnt. <laughs> sunburnt will be the key word here. And if you look over the hood, you get that reflection. You can see there's some alligator, um, or I call the alligator uh, marks on the on, on the paint. No peeling has happened yet. The clear is still intact, and only the hood. The rest of the car doesn't have that problem at all. Come along on this side. Now there's no real body damage really. Uh, you do have some door dings, you know. Here, I think there's a door ding. There's a couple door dings here and there. <laughs> the rub strips have been taken off the uh, stainless trim on the side. And actually looks better, in my opinion. That's, my dad did that. Um, but the uh, clips holding on the stainless trim are, are all good and intact. Here... You can see that the, the, the lenses are still in good condition. Um, 
But we have a fading again of the bumper fillers. Not quite as bad in the back as, as it is in the front. And the chrome is completely gone from these, uh, this, this trim. The chrome mylar, I think it is. Even the uh, backup light lenses are good. On this side, this, this side's a little bit rougher. Um, got a couple more dings or you know very slight scratches here. My friend did this one. And there's a uh, here at the there's a scratch here on the uh, door there. If uh, it can be picked up here by the camera. There's two little dents on top of this fender. And it was, that happened in the garage when something fell off a shelf. God damn it. That happened under my watch. All the other, other than that one little ding, all the other dings happened when my sister owned it for like two years. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think it might have been her husband because I know he complained that uh, he couldn't, even though he's taller than I am, he couldn't uh, judge the the outside of the car, so sometimes he parked too close to some things. That's, he confessed that, so I'm not outing him or anything. <laughs> uh, one thing uh, really interesting about the car is all the gaskets are still nice and soft. Really, you know, they're still spongy. So the Arizona sun really has an effect... Uh, the weather stripping or anything, so that's good. And while we have it open, you can take a look at this, the seats in the back. No tigers have made it back there yet. Uh, there's no... There's no puffery. And, uh, you know, this being a limited and leather, you cannot believe it's got cup holders for the kids drinking Kool-Aid. Oh, 3D dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a, a, a tip of the hat to the late Joe Flaherty who did, uh, and John Candy who did 3D theater on Second City TV. <laughs> um, the headliner, if we can get shot. All good, nothing's falling down or sagging. So that's pretty good for the interior. Um, all the, the, the uh, window, power window guides have been replaced in this car. So the windows go up and down properly. That's one thing that they break, uh, especially in the hot climate, the plastic starts to deteriorate. And all them, all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them have been replaced. As for the, uh, it, the I'm gonna show you the bad part about the driver's seat here in a minute, but the, um, Oh, look at those. Now, if you happen to buy the car, you're not going to get this money here. This, this is my money, all right? You can't have that. I still have a few personal items in here. Um, it has a little rack for both cassettes and CDs in here. Uh, here, this little guy, this fuzzy wuzzy guy right here. This guy. Not included. Not included, not included. When my daughter was a toddler, she, she and her mom went to shopping and my daughter took some of that money and bought me a present. And she has no idea the impact. You know, I didn't like her before, but after she bought me this bear, I said, ah, oh, she's not so bad, I, I think I'll keep her. <laughs> uh, it has an aftermarket um, radio in it with a CD or DVD player. And it also has uh, some various and a sundry style uh, USB ports. It also has a auxiliary 
mini 3.5 millimeter so you can and also has mirroring so you can mirror your your phone on that I don't bother I just plug in my phone to the auxiliary and play uh, Spotify that way but it's pretty cool and the um, back um, the rear speakers have been upgraded and they play pretty good and the trunk is has just a perfect volume meaning dimensions uh, that the bass is pretty impressive too. It's not going to be, you know, the gangster style thing going on, but it'll give you decent sound. It's a pretty good sound. Now, if you look at the dash, it hasn't been affected by the sun either. No cracks. You don't, you see the cracks here normally, cracks here coming out, cracks here. This is a beautiful dash. So the sun hasn't been too hard on that. The driver's seat is used quite a bit. And my dad had this habit of of getting in the car and then pushing back hard on the seat and it hurt this it broke the seam open here this is the this is of all of the things in the car this one bothers me most um, the rest of the seat's not bad it's got some wear here you know some wear here but maybe if you really really cared you might reupholster the driver's seat otherwise it still serves as a wonderful driver the door panels are another thing here that are in excellent condition. These are still here. There's no wear. Even the buttons uh, typically have a lot of wear on them. Not bad at all. So, that's the way it goes. It's got 126,000 miles. Now, I didn't detail the car. I don't sit there and squirt shiny juice on it. There's so it's going to be a little bit dusty and dirty under the hood here. Um, I suppose I can start talking about the good things about the car. Mechanically speaking, I have replaced the upper and lower control arms loaded with new bushings and ball joints. And those are, I use Moog um, suspension parts. I have replaced the idler arm, the um, center link, the tie rods, um, all Moog parts. Um, suspension wise is excellent and that's one of my sticklers. If a car doesn't ride or handle well, I don't enjoy driving it. This thing takes corners like a small, much smaller car, it, it handles quite well. Uh, other things I've done, which is, uh, will be of interest, new water pump. At the same time, I didn't want to waste. I had it apart. I just had to pull out the front pulley and I replaced the um, OptiSpark distributor. 100% new AC Delco OptiSpark distributor. Cost something like $500. It has the Mitsubishi chip in it, so it's a good one. It's going to last much better than XL or um, those uh, performance. Uh, what's the other one? The yellow one. I can't remember. Anyway, it's going to it's going to be better than any replacement you ever put in it. It'll last uh, indefinitely. I don't know when it's going to break, but it's going to be a long time from now. I also have new hoses, new belts new even the the hoses that go to the uh, the heater core um, new rocker arm gaskets new gaskets for the oil filter adapter it was starting to leak a little bit so i replaced those the upper and lower that's just the one on the bottom um let's see what of course new battery and i re change the transmission fluid and filter every 30 to 40,000 miles. It's been done at least three if not four times during its lifetime. The transmission works very strongly, shifts very solidly. In fact, I have a guy that retunes my uh, ECM. He's taken off the 109 degree governor. This thing will go 130 miles an hour on the highway, no doubt. I've had it at 120. I didn't want to break the speedometer. So, I replaced um, the 
evap canister and the the, the uh, I don't know the, the switches. So I'm, I'm old. I forget the words all the time. There's a switch on the evap canister. There's a switch on the intake manifold that that regulates the evap to be sucked in fumes to be sucked in either into the intake or back to the gas tank. Those have been replaced. It didn't need it, but I did it. This also, uh, we'll go through the paperwork here a little bit. The emissions on this car are almost nil. This is one of the cleanest cars I've ever, especially of the, of, of the era, certainly, but it's, it's an incredibly clean car. For You don't even have to buy a Prius. You can actually drive this luxury car and be happy and comfortable and still have relieve your conscience that it's not going to pollute the, car, uh, the world that much. Um, it's an ozone safe car. Also, uh, it has a brand new AC Delco air conditioner that needed to be replaced. And of course, the, the, the dryer was replaced and the orifice tube was replaced. Orifice tube. Think about that for a minute. Is it a tube? Or is it an orifice? I don't know. So, that's been done. And there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to, I'm going to forget. Oh yeah, these cars had a, had a recall, 1994 only. This main positive terminal here um, originally was, was zinc. And this car actually stalled on me and I couldn't get it home because it got so hot it melted some of the plastic here. And it does have a danger of actually catching the, this uh, box on fire. So I replaced it with the proper uh, copper coat, uh, copper post, so that won't happen again. Um, that's, that was a fun job, actually. You had to take all these little four different things apart to get to, get to there. And, phew, what a pain in the butt. Um, I put, you remember the, the Blues Brothers? It's got cop shocks, cop brakes, cop. Well, this has got cop front shocks. It's got severe duty Monroe's in the front, and it really allows it to turn around corners really nicely. It doesn't bounce up and down. It goes boom, and it's, it's done. It's really solid. I'm proud of that. And also it has um, Impala SS larger diameter sway bar in the front, and these Dyna Ride Buicks didn't have any sway bars in the back, and I added box uh, rear control arms, and I added the Impala SS larger diameter rear sway bar. So that's another reason why it does quite well in the corners. I'll take a look here if there's any, I'm sure I'm gonna miss it because I've done so much to this car. Little things like sensors and, you know, um, I don't know how to, how to say some of the little things I've done. Uh, You know, I own a car for 11 years. Unless I go through all my receipts, I'm not going to remember everything I've done. And I have Alzheimer's, so I don't remember everything anyway. If you were to buy this car, you can have uh, these wheels and these tires, or, which you might prefer, these are, you're going to get these wheels one way or the other, but I also have some nice thin striped white walls that would uh, go on this car instead of these truck tires. So you might like that better. I can put those on for you. Underneath the car, new exhaust. It did need new exhaust, but I put new exhaust on it and uh, you, you heard the results. It's actually quite mellow when you go down the road, but it, it's just enough to let you know it's a V8. The trunk is clean and nice. It's got this uh, baby net. Carry, you can carry probably twins, newborns, maybe triplets back here. But uh, toddlers, you know, you know, one or two years old, maybe two back here. And I'm not going to show you everything here, but this is all the maintenance and repair records I have on this car. How many people do you know have this much? It's not because it needed all this work. It's because I'm anal. I want everything to work perfectly all the time. I take care of problems before they occur. I, uh, I'm pro-choice. So anyway, <laughs> here's, 
here's the latest uh, less than a year old emissions. Hydrocarbons, loaded reading, five. Allowed, 220. We're talking what? One, point two percent? Anyway, idle reading, even better, three. Allowed, 220. It passed. Carbon monoxide, 0 0.01 in percents. This, this is the parts per million, the hydrocarbons parts per million. This is a percent. 0.01%. No, not 1% as in 0 0.01. It's 0.01% as in 0 0.0001. A loaded standard, 1.2%. It passed. Also, the idle reading is the same at 0 0.01. It's still allowed 1.2%. It passed. I dare any Prius to beat this reading. And I don't have to uh, burn coal charging the damn thing. <laughs> so, maybe it is he is. Oh, I'll, I want to tell you a sad thing about this car. Breaks my heart, broke my dad's heart. It is a limited. It has all the limited features like the split frame seat, and uh, illuminated running lights on the side. Uh, but it doesn't have the prestige package. And so it doesn't have the trunk pulled down. doesn't have the Twilight Sentinel. And it does have, doesn't have the cornering lights, which a prestige package on a limited would have. Continuing with some of the stuff I've done to the car, I've replaced the the yoke and pinion seal for the rear end because it was starting to drip a little bit. I replaced that myself. Myself. Um, most of the things I've done myself, actually. Um, new brake shoes, probably two times since I've owned it. New brake rotors and brake pads pads more than once rotors only once um, my dad uh, also did you know quite a bit of maintenance before i got the car including changing oil and changing the transmission fluid and you know any little thing that bothered him he made sure it got taken care of some of the work he did himself some he took to the buick dealership I don't understand why he goes to the dealership because they charge so damn much, but uh, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I can't explain it. <laughs> Maybe he got a good relationship with the mechanics there or something. That's probably the consideration. He's far more charming than I'll ever be, and uh, he made a lot of good friends. Um, he's just as angry as I am, but uh, he tend to, I don't know how he managed. He, sometimes he wasn't angry. So, like me, I'm angry all the time. So, uh, he was the uh, incredible Hulk that learned how to control his anger. I'm the one that's uh, more impulsive, and I, I surprise myself sometimes. It's like a sneeze coming on. I don't know it's coming, and all of a sudden I'm angry, you know. So, that's just my character flaw. Uh, I'm sure a few people might know that already. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can show you. Uh, this is a rest-free car. One thing about uh, you know cars from this part of the country, you don't have to worry about rust. Where I'm uh, originally from, rust-free means it rusts so much that now the metal is replaced by holes. There's only metal and holes, no rust. Here, it means that the only rust you're ever going to get is uh, some uh, a thin layer of surface rust on unpainted parts, and. Uh, it's a beautiful car underneath. I can't really get a good shot underneath, but believe me. It's good. What people like to do is show you the door jams. I can do that. So, this particular model has this uh, lip, and uh, in cars in uh, wetter weather or salt weather, it starts rusting here under the doors. If you take a look underneath here, if you can, uh, this, this car is very clean and all the door jams. Oh. There's a guy that has a YouTube channel 
that loves Buicks and he has a lot of friends who have Buicks and that's the first thing he wants to show you, the door jams. That to me, if it's got a clean door jam, it's like okay with him. That's the way it goes. <laughs> and he always says, I gotcha, I gotcha. Sometimes he likes to interrupt you a little bit when you're trying to explain something to him, but he goes, I gotcha. <laughs> Uh, let's see anything else uh, yes this car's for sale and I'll put the price on the uh, description um, you, you probably maybe you won't think it's worth it because of the cosmetic problems but uh, if you know anything about mechanic mechanical things uh, this car there's no guarantees because any car can break down in fact I can I might not make it home today because maybe a sensor goes out who knows but uh, barring that, this car should last. Let's, let's, it should make it to, to 200,000 miles, no problem, as far as I know. I, I've driven it. I've driven it to uh, Denver. I've driven it to Los Angeles. I've, it's my daily driver. I, I take it everywhere. And I, don't, I wouldn't hesitate to take it anywhere. So uh, I wouldn't leave it in Wisconsin because then it will get rusty. So you want to, for people in Wisconsin, you've got to promise you're going to take care of it, okay? <laughs> yeah, everything works. Windshield wipers, all the, all the lights work, uh, the, the power windows work. I got them down. Believe me, I'm going to get them back up again because I'm going to put the air conditioner on. Why? Because the air conditioner works. And here, uh, let's see, it's April 13th. A few days ago, it was got up to 50s, which is very unusual. Today, it's going to get up to 80. And even now, when it's maybe 70, the sun hurts. Painful here in Tucson. I usually wear a hat. But, We've never uh, had to use the airbags, so I don't know if they work or not. Um, a horn. Goddamn freight train. You should see all the Pierce is scrambling when they hear that sound. They just, oh my God, you know. So uh, it scares the hell out of Democrats, this horn. It's like they think it's a train. And they think train, that's, that sounds Republican to me. Yeah. Train, that's a very conservative thing isn't it is it isn't only uh toxic white men aren't they aren't they the only people that uh, run the railroad those sons of bitches so uh it scares them when they hear that sound so <laughs> for those who are offended you don't want my car anyway this is a conservative car it's not a liberal car all right we can put two or three priuses in the trunk in fact i should take out the spare tire put a prius in the trunk if this car breaks down i can drive the prius home Provided it's got enough electricity to get me there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think, uh, I think that's it. I, um, I hope I've endured a few of you. And uh, for those uh, who find me obnoxious, you're hopeless. <laughs>